All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, when I, uh, when I do this video, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to uh, Dome Hats, which has helped us over the last month do a question of the day on Twitter with a <clears throat> giveaway each day with a boonie hat, bucket hat, just like this play fast football hat that I'm wearing. So uh, during a time like this, I want to give a shout out to a small business owner that has taken care of us and at play fast football with our clinic and other things we've done. So make sure you check out Dome Hats at www.domeheadwear.co and you can get all right custom hats that you can build online, build them your own way with your logo. Hats like this, all right, hat that was made for a child cancer fund. Our play fast football fitted hat. Our white play fast football hat. Here is a trucker mesh hat that they do for Rydell. Here is one of the original, all right, dome hats with their logo established 2006. Here is one of our school hats in white and orange with our logo on the front and our slogan on the back, swords up. All right, here's, bless you, here's a similar hat in all gray now, so, so you can see how it can be custom. We changed the panel, similar hat, same logo, slogan on the back. All right, here's a hat that they did for a, a Georgia All-Star game. All right, Georgia Athletic Coach Association, North versus South. So you can see how custom you can make it. That's the North hat, all right? And on the back it says 2017 All-Star Game. Okay, and then another uh, 2018 FACA, all right, baseball game. So you can see there, again, all right, custom hat. Do it the way you want to. Put the logo, put anything you want on the side, okay? so. Make sure you check out Dome Hats if you have headwear needs, all right? They're a great company located here in Northeast Florida. Thank you to my daughter, Mia, for being the model for the hats today. Let's get into the concept that we want to talk about today. So in the question of the day, uh, last week we talked about a question where we said you have one play that you've got to run to win a game. You're going to run it. You're on the six-yard line. You've got three seconds left in the game. You're down by four points. You have to score a touchdown. And the only caveat we threw out there is that you know the defense is going to be playing press man-to-man. So right away with all the responses, we got a multitude of responses that were about rub routes and, and pick routes and how to get guys into space. So what I'm going to talk about today, based on a lot of those answers that we got from that question, is two concepts that we use down near the goal line that can help you alleviate some of the straight man-to-man -man situations that you get into. And again, the question was kind of loaded to get and generate interest. So you don't really know when you're calling a play exactly what the coverage is going to be. So we laid out a scenario for people to call a play to win a game. And then we laid out the scenario that you knew the coverage. Well, obviously, the tough part in football is you don't always know the exact coverage you're going to get for every situation to call the right play. If you did, it would make the game really easy. So what we're going to look at today is two things that we use all right, in, inside the tight red zone that can kind of alleviate the straight man-to-man -man issues. The first one we're going to look at is what we call a cut coverage. All right, and what it is, is it's a, it's a deal for us. We're, we're a 3-3-5 three, three, team, so we have five DBs on the field the entire time. So if we don't make a goal line substitution and we're still going to play with the same personnel on the field, we've got five DBs on the field. So when we play the cut coverage, we've got five skilled players that can match up and defend their five eligible receivers. So what we do is we take our corners, all right, and we hard inside press number one to try and eliminate the slant route if possible and to make them throw the fade or the back shoulder ball, force that lower percentage throw. We take our left and right safety and we play them with outside leverage on number two because what we're going to do is we're going to use our stack linebackers as inside cut players on number two. All right, so if they're trying to get all right, any quick looks to two, we're going to take those looks away with the inside cut players and then we're going to allow our safeties to play with outside leverage on two, all right, which means now we're trying to take away the ability for them to run the rub route. So hard inside leverage on one with outside leverage on two, we're going to try and deter them, all right, from running the, the slant flat routes, the things that they like to run. We got to be on a little bit different levels here with our man coverage. You got to be, if you're pressed on one, you got to be two or three off on another. Can't be at the same level because you're going to get rubbed or picked real quick. But it's the outside leverage on two that if we can deny that defender from getting to the flat and deny this receiver from getting inside, 
we've got a chance to win on those picks and rubs. And what we're going to tell our safeties, all right, is they have inside help with the inside break of number two so that they can play heavy outside leverage, all right, on that number two receiver. All right, what we'll also do at times is we'll allow our corner and safety to kind of bracket man those two things depending on the down and the distance. And if we know we're, we're expecting pass and we, and we don't think we're going to get a run play, so let's say it's fourth and goal from the five and we don't think they're going to run the ball and maybe we can, depending on the formation, we can widen these cut players out a little bit. We may play some bracket inside I.O. coverage, inside out coverage with our corners and our safeties knowing that they have all right, help to the inside and now maybe we'll pass some of those routes off. We don't like to teach that right away. We like to teach that as a changeup. I think it's easier in high school to teach straight man and then the leverage that you're playing the man. So if you're trying to deny inside routes, play inside leverage. If you've got help inside, you want to play it or carry it from outside leverage, play at different depths so you can avoid picks and rubs. But the cut players give us a chance when they're trying to run. If you're going to get slant flat with a pick and rub that way, then an inside out coverage, all right, is probably your best option or the next choice that we go to if you can go to it is your best option because inside cut players aren't going to help you all that much on slant flat combinations. But what they will do is when you have inside cut players, you can change the leverage of how you're playing, all right, these routes. If I had no help, if I was playing man coverage with no help, I would never allow my safety to play outside leverage and give that quick look in, easy throw to number two. But if I have an inside cut player that can deny that quick throw to number two, I can now play number two with outside leverage, which uh, allows me to kind of get to the rub before it happens if that guy wants to run the slant flat or the, any type of out within combination from number one. So the cut players allow us to play with that leverage. So that's one way we might alleviate the possible problem all right, of the, of the rubs and the picks. The other thing we'll do sometimes, especially if we get a back that's going to be fast out, we'll bracket the back as well. So by playing outside leverage on two, if we get the back fast, we'll put the safety on the back, and now we'll put the free safety on, all right, that number two there. And again, we have help from the cut player. If it's a three-by-one set, all right, we like the fact that if it goes to three-by-one, a lot of times what people are going to do, all right, in their three-by-one stuff, and this is an adjustment that you've got to be able to make with your players when they understand where their help is, a lot of times if it's going to go to three-by-one, especially down on the goal line, Obviously, you've got to be aware of the picks and the rubs to the three receiver side. But what you've also all right, got to be conscious of, if it's three by one in goal line scenarios, they're probably trying to put their best receiver to the single and get him matched up. So when it's three by one and we have an inside cut player, we'll now tell that corner to play with some heavy, hard outside leverage, take away the fade and, and, and the backside shoulder throw, and allow yourself all right, with help inside we can help bracket and defend that throw so now we can play with heavier leverage outside if it's three by one, okay? So some of the things that you've got to understand when you're figuring out what you need to defend and how you need to defend it. Also in that concept, we add the mic, we can add them anywhere from interior gaps to off the edge and bring an end inside. So we just add the mic as a fourth rusher, all right, which gives us four, uh, a four man rush, uh, with, which in a goal line situation is better than our normal standard three-man pressure. All right, the other thing we'll do, and we can only do this, we can only do this when we're almost guaranteed that it is a, all right, throwing situation. Uh, the other thing we'll do, and we, and we did this a couple times last year, we did it in overtime in the game on uh, fourth and goal from the 10-yard line. We'll play a seven across vision and break concept with our heels at the goal line, and we'll force the offense to put a route in front of us and behind us and throw the ball over our head. The closer you get to the goal line, if you can guarantee pass, the better this concept is because the tighter the field and the windows get, and now we feel like those frontline players can defend some of those throws that are trying to go over their head because they can't be thrown with a lot of loft on the ball. They have to be thrown on a line drive because of the room, all right, where the offense runs out of room. So what we'll do is 
All of our backside defenders and our linebackers are already taught how to play vision and break concepts. By vision and break, what we mean is you're going to be looking at the quarterback and you're going to be playing all your intentions off of, or all your coverages off the quarterback's intentions. So we're not going to be playing a specific, um, you know, matching zone. We're not going to be playing a specific man. We're going to be playing an area based on where the quarterback looks and we're all going to kind of move and then drive when the quarterback's front hand comes off the ball. So when we, when we pressure, we have a two under three deep pressure that we call a hot pressure where we use vision and break uh, concepts. So for us, we can take these concepts and use them down on the goal line. Now, we only do this when we think we're going to get past. So it's got to be you know, fourth and goal from the four or the five or the six or maybe third and goal from the five or the six and we think we're getting past. We can defend runs this way, but it's not the greatest all right, in the world. We still have enough players to defend the run. It's not, it's not the best in the world if I was thinking I was getting run. Plus, if I thought I was getting run, I'd probably change personnel. We're talking about passing situations on the goal line. So we'll put all of these players, all right, and I'll try and draw it the best I can. They will all have their heels on the goal line. So every one of these players will have their heels on the goal line, and they are not going to backpedal. We tell them that goal line is a cliff, and you can't move off the cliff. The free safety has to come down and replace the mic. Okay, and, and each of these players is going to be playing off the intentions of the quarterback, so we're not looking at any receivers. We're not running with any receivers. If we get an out or an in, we're not chasing anything, so we're not going to get picked and we're not going to get rubbed. So what we're going to do is, all right, our corners are going to play the fade of number one and the back shoulder throw of number one and then the out cut of number two. They don't have to chase slants inside. Our safeties are going to play the in-breaking routes of number one, our, and then... And then um, our stack linebackers are going to play the in-breaking routes of number two. Our free safety is there to adjust to any number three receiver. So if we got a three-by-one set, all right, our safety would be there to play the in-breaking routes of three. But in general, he's right over the quarterback right now, kind of on that goal post that the ball is in the middle, and he's just breaking off of what the quarterback's going to do. So if the quarterback looks one way or the other, all of these players will slide in the direction that the quarterback's looking. So if the quarterback looked one way with my heels on the goal line, I would slide the way he's looking, and then I wouldn't break until his front hand comes off the ball because that's when he's going to throw the ball. All right, so I would be looking, when the quarterback looks, we would slide, and when we, when we do a drill like this, we do a rope drill where all seven of these players are on a rope and, and the quarterback or a coach, I'll turn and I'll look this way. And when I do, every player better shuffle and slide the way I'm looking. Then I'll turn back and look the other way, shuffle and slide, look the other way, I'll take my hand off the ball, now we're going to break and drive. And what that allows us to do is, when you start getting all the concepts that want to be, you know, slant flat, all right, or maybe double slant, push the back real fast out, all those concepts that can be rubs and picks, we're not going to run with those, we're not going to chase them, so you're not going to rub and pick us. So on this side, he's got that slant of two, he's got that slant of one, the back push to the flat goes right out to that corner, all right, and then on this side, he's got that outbreak of two, he's got that slant throw of one, and you're looking at the quarterback, so hopefully with seven across, those windows are tight. And what you're going to do is you're going to force them to throw the ball. If that's the goal line, whoops, sorry. They had their heels at the goal line. So if this was the goal line kind of there, and this is the back of the end zone that's here, what we're going to do is we're going to try and force them to throw the ball and high low us into the back of the end zone there, and the closer we are to the end zone, the lower that throw has to be made, so we feel like we can get, all right, to those throws. The further you are away, like we did this in, in an overtime game on fourth and 10, and the offense actually had a chance to, to possibly throw it over our head um, because they can put more loft on the ball with more with 20 yards to make a throw, okay? But our guys should have more time to defend that because you don't have to break on anything in front of you if it's fourth and 10 and they run a smash concept. Let them run the hitch at the five, throw that, and then rally and tackle it. So we got away with the quarterback sack. I think they actually had a guy. They had a nice little concept drawn up where it might not have been from the 10. It might have been from the 6 or the 7. Yeah, maybe it was from the 5 or the 6. I don't remember. They had a nice little concept where they got a guy. All right, I think they might have been three by one possibly, but they had you know somebody at the front corner, and then they kind of got a guy in here, and then they snuck a guy back there. And they might have had that throw, but that's the throw we're trying to force in that situation because we're trying to avoid the easy picks and rubs. So those are two all right, simple adjustments for us. 
I know when you talk red zone, uh, zone coverage, it's going to be more matching in nature with a lot of guys, and, and it's going to get more in depth like uh, red two coverage. For us, we always try and do the easiest thing possible that our kids know how to do. So if we want to play a zone concept down there, for us, it's heels across. We just call it cover seven. I know that's not cover seven terminology for most people, but our kids know it as seven across. They know that they're all going to play vision and break. They know that they're going to play heels on the goal line. Okay, so they, they understand exactly what we're trying to do. We start working on it in the spring and in the summer when we're doing some seven on seven stuff to get as many reps as possible. So it gives us a possible answer. Only called it four times last year, and one time was in fourth down on an overtime game. So um, it's two different answers for you. Cut coverage to alleviate some pressure, vision and break to alleviate some pressure. Again, make sure you check out at Dome Hats, all right, at Dome Hats on Twitter. Uh, make sure you check out what they do. And in a time like this, when we get through everything and back to uh, some normalcy, the relationships that you've built with people are going to be the only thing that really matters. So make sure you have those strong relationships with your small businesses and you're supporting your small businesses that help us in the football world. All right, and check them out at www.domeheadwear.co. That's www.domeheadwear.co. All right, thanks for everything you guys do for me. Thanks for subscribing to Play Fast Football. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notifications. Thumbs up for likes. Thumbs down if you don't like. Let's us know what to do with videos. As always, send comments and leave comments down below. All right, check out our other sponsors, Defensive Coordinator 1, Just Play Football, Difference USA, and GameStrat. There'll be a link for GameStrat in the description box, excuse me, description box below. Link to take you directly to GameStrat's website. All right, as always, remember you won't play well until you play fast, and I'll see you guys and Skippy next time. Next.